Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, welcome. It is Friday, December 17th. It is actually 9-11 in the evening, and I'm going to do some baking, and it's, I'm probably insane for doing that, but it is December 17th, so it is one week till Christmas Eve, and I've got some more things I need to get done. Um, so I'm going to get some work done. Uh, work done. I just finished my work day. I'm tired. My feet are killing me. I actually hurt my back at work last night. But nonetheless, I'm on a deadline because Christmas Eve is one week away. So I'm just going to get it done. Walked in the door. My kitchen is not exactly tidy. Uh, but it is what it is. I've cleared off a space to work. And I'll work on tidying it up once I'm done getting my baking in the oven. So what I'm going to make tonight is a gumdrop loaf. It's uh, colorful looking and it's, it's kind of a cute, it's not as light as like a banana bread, it's more of a heavier loaf, but it makes two good sized loaves and they freeze very, very well. So I'm going to get that started. I've got the ingredients set out other than the flour and sugar because those are large bags, but I'll turn you around and I'll show you what everything is involved. Uh, like I said, I'm probably insane for doing this at this hour of the night. I was supposed to work 3.30 to 9 tonight, but I wound up getting called in early. They wanted me for 1.30, no, it was 3 to 9, 3 to 8.30 I was working, sorry. And they wanted me for 1.30, could not do that, but I did 2 to 8.30, so I did a six and a half hour day. And, you know, Fridays are always busy in a grocery store, but especially a week till Christmas, it's just nuts in there. And I'm working tomorrow too. So right now I'm just going to turn you around and I will, I just need to get this done because I still need to make peanut butter cookies at some point And I still need to make the banana eggnog bread that I've been talking about endlessly in all my videos. So maybe this weekend I'll get that done. My plan is to get this gumdrop loaf done tonight. And I'm hoping to maybe make a crock pot of chili before I go to work tomorrow and then maybe do the peanut butter cookies tomorrow night after work. So hopefully I might be able to film all of those. But that also means getting this kitchen tidied up because my crock pot needs to go into the dishwasher in order to make chili for tomorrow. So, but for now, I'm going to focus on the gumdrop loaf. So let me turn you around. I'll show you the ingredients involved and we'll get started. Okay, this recipe cooks at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, so I have the oven preheating. Those are the, my packages left over of salted and unsalted butter in the background. I have a good bit of unsalted butter left over, but I don't have a lot of recipes that require that, so I'm going to need to get some more salted butter because I have literally half of one stick of butter left in that green box. Not great. So I need one and a half cups of butter, so three sticks of butter here. And two cups of granulated sugar, which are in the cupboard behind me. Um, three eggs. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Oh, one teaspoon of lemon zest. I have a lemon I just brought home from the store. It's in my lunch bag. Um, three cups of all-purpose flour, which is also in a bag behind me. Half a teaspoon, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. I have two containers here because this one is very, very empty feeling. I don't know that there's much in there. It might be enough, it might not. And three quarter cup of evaporated milk. And then two and a half cups of baking gums tossed in one quarter cup of flour. So I'm going to, basically once we do the wet ingredients, then I have to mix the dry ingredients in a separate bowl. And then I think I alternate them with the evaporated milk, I believe. And then after that, I fold in the gums that are tossed in the flour in a, yet a third bowl. So let me get you set up on the tripod and I'll get started with the actual baking process. The oven is preheating in the background. So if you end up hearing it go beep, 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 that means it's preheated. It'll probably be ready to go before I actually am ready to get this in the oven, but that's fine. I just wanted to get that step out of the way. So it's preheating. Let me get you on the tripod and we'll get going. Okay, first off, we're gonna start. I'm gonna take the wrap off my butter. I could have done that step already, but I did not. So each of these are half a, half a cup of butter. And I'm gonna get these in there. If you hear ringing in the background, that is one of my parrots. Um, my phone's... Well, first of all, I'm filming my cell phone, so it can't be ringing. But second of all, my phone is on silent or vibrate, so you're not going to hear it ringing at any, at, any, at any given point anyway, even if I was filming on a camera. That's my parrot, my African Grey. She rings, does a very good impersonation of a phone ringing. Okay, so we've got the tin foil right there, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Half cups. And I'm going to get my sugar out of the cupboard. Thinking there's enough in this bag. Well, I've got another large bag. Sugar. So. 
Okay, I think I have a hard time getting it to look be completely full. There we go. Okay, you know I'm, yeah, you guys, you know I am filming in here, right? hockey on TV in the next room and birds on the loose and there goes the oven saying that it's preheated. Two cups of sugar and three eggs. Oh, and then I will do my vanilla and I'll blend my wet ingredients together. Hopefully I won't get the shells in there. Ow, did not need to do that. <laughs> That did have an eight shell go in, and I see it there, so I think I can get it out with a spoon. There's got to be a better way of doing this than that. Oh, and it's sinking down in there. That is never good. Okay, let me pause this while I try and get that out of there. Okay, we are back. Uh, two teaspoons of vanilla, and I've got to get my lemon out so I can adjust that. start blending these wet ingredients together and then I'll do that still in the background. Spoon and work on getting that lot of the butter, the butter in there decently. Big clump of, clump of butter right here that needs to get blended in properly. And some there too. I can tell we live in a house of birds. Here. The problem 
is my big carrot that's walking. She's kind of a mama's girl and she knows I'm home from work. And I think she's wondering why I'm not coming running to get her out of the cage. teaspoon because the one teaspoon is a bit wet. Oh yeah, I think I should be able to get enough out of this one. It just feels very empty, but there's enough. So if you have one and a half, and I think that is it. And then three quarter cup of evaporated milk. Cheese grater out of here. Let's see for the dishes. pause this and have a look quickly on my phone to make sure that I'm not missing salt or anything in this recipe yet because I don't have that written down, but I don't think so because I think I wrote down all the ingredients I need. Three quarter cup of evaporated milk. I'm uh, right second to make sure that this doesn't fall from salt and I believe I'm supposed to alternate adding the dry ingredients with the milk to the recipe but I'm going to confirm that because the recipe is actually on my phone so let me pause you again for one second while I check that and I shall be right back okay so I think we're good we just have to start adding the dry ingredients and alternate with the milk and I still have to toss the uh, gum drops with the other flour, the other bit of flour after this. Let's get this side here. Still a little bit more butter up there on the beater, but that's okay. I'll add that after. Or I'll not add it, but I'll spoon it down there in a bit. Okay, get this going. I believe it's supposed to start with flour in mixture, and then add a bit of the milk, and then a bit more flour, and then the rest of the milk, I think. Anyway, as long as it all gets mixed in, that's the main thing. Like I said, this is not as light and fluffy of a loaf as a banana bread or a carrot loaf and things like that. This is a heavier loaf. It almost reminds me of like a pound cake type thing. It's very thick and heavy. But it is good. Like it's not overly rich and super sweet. Like it's just heavier, but it's not so heavy that it's like it's ridiculous or anything. It's, it's good. It's quite, it's a nice cake. You can actually make this in a bun cake as well. The recipe said a bun cake or two loaf pans, or there was one other way you could do it too. I can't remember the third option now, but bun cake. I have to turn it down a smidge because when I'm adding the flour, I shouldn't add it when it's at a higher speed because then it wants to uh, go up like a big cloud of dust, right? So I'm trying to wait until I like, run that up the speed. I'm trying to get my mind up what I'm doing here. Okay, but there's still some... Yeah, that butter. Okay, well that butter that's on top of the beater should probably be going in pretty soon. Okay, let's get the rest of this flour in. There's some that's in there that is just not... Out of the bowl because I can't get it to a good enough angle. There we go. 
And because it is pretty, it's starting to get a little dry and sticking there. I need to put the last of that evaporated milk in. And that will hopefully get this off the beater. The conures are pearly and green cheap conures are out of the cage. I know that. But that squawking that I'm hearing now is cricket. My Indian ring up here, so I'm looking over my shoulder. He's also out of the cage. So, if you watched any of my baking or cooking videos before, you'll know that sometimes he makes an appearance. Sometimes he flies in here and sits on the cupboard behind me and carries on and squawks and even talks while I'm baking. So far, he has not done that. But that's also because the conures are out of the cage and he loves the conures, so right now he's obsessed with them. And he's not so much bothering me. Not that he's really a bother me, but he's a distraction. He kind of takes over my videos. Well, he's only done that in one or two videos, actually, but if you were ever watching me for any length of time, you'll know what he's like. He's like peekaboo and pretty bird in the background, and he's cute until he takes over. So he's, like, he's the vlogger instead of me. Oh, you guys. So even though he's not in here squawking, they're just outside the room. Somebody, not me, left them out, and they're bellering. blend it in a little bit more and then I'm going to toss the, in the meantime I'm going to get a small bowl, measure up a quarter cup of flour and toss the wine gums in there. A little bit more of that milk here, I'm just going to get it in there. This last drop. Might as well get them in there, don't waste anything. Might have missed the bowl on one, but that's okay. Now what I'm going to do for greasing, I'm not going to bother like oiling or buttering the loaf pans. I usually just use pan cooking spray and that's what I'm probably going to do this time. Same thing. Works just fine. As long as you spray them really, really well, they'll turn out of the pans just fine later. Now instead of using the beater, I think so that just so that I don't demolish the wine, uh, the wine gums, the baking gums, just so I don't demolish them with the beater when I put them in, I'm going to just use my spatula to fold them in. If I'm not doing well with that, then I'll use the beater briefly, but I just don't want to break them into pieces, that's all. I like to kind of keep them intact if I can. Just trying to get whatever I can off the beater so that it's... Get as much of that batter in there as I can. And I can't remember how long it says to bake. I think that the length of baking time varies depending on if you're doing loaf pans or bunt pans, but it's going to be somewhere around an hour. I think for the loaf pans, it said check them after 50 minutes, whereas if it was in a bunt pan, it would take longer. But I think, it seems to me last year, that it still took a good hour, even just for the two loaf pans. But they're only baking at 300 as opposed to the usual 350 that you bake a lot of things at, so that's probably partly why I am about to go eat some birds out. They're not even in the kitchen, but if you can hear them as loud as I can, they're not far. They are causing havoc. You guys! Hey, it's a good idea to let them all open. I swear, somebody is determined to sabotage me. They, they either think they're funny doing this, or they think they're trying to sabotage me, one of the two, because somebody thinks this is a good idea. Right now, after having injured my back at work last night, and putting in an extra hour on my shift to work tonight, I'm not particularly in the mood for the peanut gallery behind me, but wasn't my idea to let them out. Find my quarter cup measuring cup. This bowl's gonna be too small to do that. I'm just gonna do it. Ah, oh, I'm gonna use my measuring cup here. Lost one, but that is okay. That is 
It's par for the course given how the day has gone. Camera rolling or not, I would strongly suggest that somebody do something with them, please. But I'm not pausing the camera for this, just please do something with them. I mean, they're cute, they're entertaining, but right now they're noisy. And that's not unusual for a bird, but when I'm filming, I don't want to have to scream to make myself hurt. If I already, I have lost count. I don't know if that's the first one quarter cup or second one quarter cup. So I'm lost. I'm gonna put them back in the bag. Cause I don't know if I did two and a half cups there or if I did two and a quarter cups. I have no clue. Probably doesn't matter that terribly much, but I do try and be fairly accurate when I'm baking. So I'd like to. But I'm distracted. My all this bedlam going on behind me. And it's not a good distraction right now. So we're going to do one cup. Okay. Well, they're all just happy because they're out of the cage right now. The Conyers are best friends with each other. The Ringneck wants to be their friend. They're not interested because they're best friends with each other. But the Ringneck is very, very, very vocal about the whole thing. He loves the Conyers. He wants to be their friends, their friend. And he's not taking the social cues that they've got their buddied up already and that they don't want him part of this. So. And the more they reject him or rebuff him, the more vocal he becomes. So we've got two cups already here. Doing a quarter cup right now. There we go. And then one more quarter cup. And actually, when I bought these baking gums at Bulk Barn, I had no idea how much I was getting. This actually is working out just about perfect. I need two and a half cups, and I'm basically there. Okay, now I'm just gonna put a couple more in. That's all that's left. That's perfect. Now I just need a quarter cup flour, and I'll toss the wine. Why do I want to call them wine gums? They're not. They're baking gums. I know there is such a thing as wine gums, but that is not what these are. Okay, that. Toss these. Gently, I don't want to toss them too much because I don't want to have them spill out of the bowl or flour to go everywhere, which I just tried to do. And I think I am going to just try and use my spatula instead of the, the beater on the stand mixer to get them blended in. And then once these are in the oven, then I don't care if the birds come out and are noisy. But right here, right now, I just want to. I probably shouldn't even be bothering baking at this hour, let alone filming, but here we are. Is it 9.37 already? It's going to be 10.30, probably easy before these come out of the oven. And then probably midnight before they're even semi-cool, if, if that. Unless I put them outside on the deck because it's freaking cold out there. But I don't really want to do that because they're glass pans, and who knows what putting a hot glass pan outside in that kind of temperature would do. It might be, it might not be such a smart idea. Okay, there we go. I'm going to try with my spatula. And then, yeah, see... I'm just going to take this right off of here because I can't do the spatula if that's there. I have such a mess going on the counter. Let me try and get a bit more of this off here. Not for doing my spoon with anymore, but. What a headache. Now the house is somewhat quiet. Once they're back in their cages. Well, technically the birds should probably go into bed anyway soon, but. We discovered Pepe, our Quaker parrot, had to go to the vet today. Evidently, he's too heavy for his breed. He's to want to diet. And or get out of his cage and fly more. Fantastic. I put the bird on a diet. So he was out of the cage when I got home from work so he could fly around and get exercise. He's one of the least noisy ones to be out. But when I got home from work, 
first off, he doesn't like my hair up for work. He doesn't like me looking different, and he doesn't like my work uniform. So he was on a mission to attack me and kill me. So we had no choice but to put him back in his cage. So much for his exercise time. He does not like change. He does not like strangers. And with my hair up, I guess I look like a stranger. And he was on a mission to finish me off. Okay, this is folding in nicely. See, this batter is thick, as you can probably see by the resistance I'm getting with the spatula. So when I go to pour this into the loaf pans, it won't pour. I'll basically be scooping it in with the spatula. And that is fun. Oh, my finger too. Okay, let me just get some cooking spray here. I don't know if I will get to doing the uh, peanut butter cookies tomorrow right, right after work or not because I think I work till 8 and I need more butter. I'll have to check my recipe and see, but I, if it's unsalted butter, I'm good to go, but if it's salted butter, I need to get more, which I mean, I could get them at my work, but PC brand butter is on my offers at Superstore, so that would mean driving over there to get butter and then coming home and then making cookies until... 10, 11 o'clock at night because I'll probably make a double batch which will be like six dozen and then I'll be up till all hours doing that but I'd like to have them done before Sunday so I'll have to see let me just get some of these in here get some in the other pan too I know you can't really see because this is closer to the camera than what I don't think you can see that But I'll show you them after, once they're ready to go in the oven. You'll see them, I'll put them on the other side of the mixing bowl and you'll see them then. Or hold one up to you. And then you'll see them. But right now I'm just trying to get these spooned in here as best I can. Because there is no pouring these into the loaf pans. These are thick. But that is okay. They always turn out nice. But I've never made them before last year. This was an internet recipe. Although typically I prefer recipes that are from people, friends that are like tried and true, you know, recommendations from people I know who have made them. This was just one that came up in a an ad online saying, oh, try this. And it sounded good and it looked pretty because of the gums, the, the gumdrops. And I just decided to try it. Typically I like ones that I know people are like family recipes and that they can tell me that they've made them for years and are good made an exception in this case, decided to just simply try it, and they turned out well. I wasn't sure because I'm used to, as I was spooning these into the pans last year, again, I was like, uh-oh, these are, this is really thick. This isn't a normal loaf. And so I wasn't sure how it would turn out, but it actually was just fine. This apparently is just how these loaves are. But you can see, I know you don't see the loaf pans, but you can see on the spatula and how hard I'm having to, the resistance I'm having, that these are not runny like a typical well i mean banana bread look banana bread isn't runny anyway but you know what i mean like you can really you can pour that batter into a loaf pan whereas this you could but it's it's really easier to just spoon it in it's just that texture but it, it nonetheless even though it looks very thick it turns out well at least it's the one and only time i made it last year it turned out just fine and i believe i'm doing this exactly the same so it shouldn't if I'm following this exactly as I did last year, which I believe I am, I don't really remember, it's been a year, I've only made it the one time, but it should be basically the same as last time. Okay, so I gotta make sure this all gets in there. One loaf pan is slightly bigger than the other, slightly deeper, I guess. So you can't, when I'm baking, I'll have to check them and see. Like one may be done a few minutes earlier than the other because they're not quite the same size of loaf pan. They're close, but not quite. But I will check. I'll just have to monitor it. I'll set a timer. Maybe I'll set it for 45 minutes and then I'll check and see where things are at after that. Okay, I have no idea. I think this is probably enough. 
So let me just smooth these out a little bit. Same as last go around last time. Okay, let me spoon if I can find it. Uh, I don't know where it is. Try and smooth these, and I will wash my hands, and I will push the mixer back and push these guys into frame so you can see them. They're colorful. I mean, I couldn't really sift through the bin at Bulk Barn and try and get only red and green baking gums. There are like yellow and orange in there too. But there does seem to be a good bit, a good number of red and green in there, so that should be just fine. Even with a little bit of the yellow and orange, that's also fine. It's, you know, even if it's not predominantly red and green, that's still totally fine. But there are a good number of red and green ones in there, so I think it'll be okay. I remember having the same thing last year. I thought maybe they might have had some just some that were just red and green, kind of like you can get red and green M&Ms or whatever for baking, but they didn't, but that's okay. I record the rainbow a little bit. Put this off my hands. Get a little bit of batter on me here. All right. So this is a mess. My kitchen's a mess. I'm gonna push this back. Let's see if I can kind of push these guys into frame a little bit here. Hopefully that's gonna be okay. I think and you can kind of see them down there now or at least one of them anyway lower you down a bit there we go all right so my oven is preheated to 300 all the way over there so I'm gonna go get these guys in and I will start off my timer with 45 minutes and then we'll see where we're at we're baking at 300 Fahrenheit not the usual 350 or 375 that you see most things bake at and we'll see how they turn out I'll check them at that point and see hopefully they'll be all right i know they'll be fine it's just a question of how long they need to bake so we'll do 45 minutes to start i'm pretty sure it'll take longer but that's a good starting point point. and as you can see i've got some mess over here got some open cupboards and just uh mess in general okay i will let them bake i'll check back with you once they are done i'll let you see how they turn out Okay, that was my timer. 45 minutes are up, and I don't even need to take these out to show you to be able to tell if they are not done. Not even close. Yeah. I can see there's a little bit of brown starting around the edges there, but they are not done. There's nowhere near ready. No point in even trying to do a toothpick test on those. On the plus side, I did get the kitchen mostly tidied up. It's not bad. The dishwasher's running. The laundry going downstairs. <sighs> we're getting there. We're getting there. Alrighty, so here we are. This is the finished product. These took the better part of an hour and a half to bake. So I tested them at 45 minutes. Not a chance. They were nowhere near done. Tested them again 15 minutes later at that one hour mark. And again at the one and a quarter hour mark. And not quite. And finally at one, and 30, one, one hour and 30 minutes. They're good. They're, the toothpick is clean when I insert it to test it out. So yeah, it took a good chunk of time. It took basically, I know it did say that if you did this in a bundt pan, that it would probably take the majority of an hour and a half or an hour and three quarters. That's about what this took too. Even though I did two loaf pans, you can see they're slightly, they're similar in size, but slightly different. This one here is a little bit, not quite as wide and not quite as tall, but nonetheless, they took about the same amount of time. But yeah, they did take the better part of an hour and a half, maybe even about five minutes more than that. But they are done and it is... 11.45 at night. You guys, I am insane. I have a load of small little laundry I have to fold right now and then a load of delicates that I need to dry for about 15-20 minutes and then hang them. And then a load of darks I need to wash yet tonight and get into the dryer because my daughter's uniform for work is in there and she needs it for tomorrow morning. So I'm going to be doing laundry till about 1 o'clock in the morning after putting in a full day of work today with an injured back. But this is... <laughs> 
Uh, this is just life and it's a week till Christmas Eve, but I'm trying to just get this baking wrapped up as much as I can because we're running out of time. It is only a week till Christmas Eve. So I'm hoping to get this crock pot of chili going tomorrow before I go to work. And then maybe, maybe, maybe if I have enough butter, do the peanut butter cookies tomorrow night. And then most of my must haves as far as Christmas baking will be done other than my banana eggnog bread, which I can do that at some point next week. But I just, you know, this is what I worked on tonight. I probably didn't, shouldn't have done baking after work tonight. Should have just gotten straight to supper and and uh, laundry. But I wanted to get some of this done because it is a deadline. Christmas Eve is one week tonight. So that is what I did. I'm going to have to let these cool. I would like to say I could wrap them up and put them in the freezer or whatever before I go to bed tonight. But no, not by, if I'm hoping to be done this laundry and stuff by 1 a.m. There's not a chance I'm going to have these will be cooled thoroughly enough to wrap them and freeze them by that point. So I'm just going to let them sit and if they get to a point that they're cool enough I might put a tea towel over them or something over them just so they don't dry out overnight but I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow to do any slicing of them or putting them in the freezer. But at any rate this is the gumdrop loaf and it does make them nice fairly thick loaf compared to some other loaves like banana bread and stuff but it is tasty and when you slice it open it's colorful because of the different colors of baking gums inside and it does make a good two loaves so you get a good batch out of it and they do freeze very well so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did of course subscribe if you're new leave a comment down below and give it a thumbs up and we will see you next time hopefully i'll be able to get some more baking videos or cooking videos up this weekend so we'll keep an eye out for those videos turn your notification bell on and we'll see you next time have a great night, everyone.